Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. We're down here in my crowded closet full of electronics junk to see what kind of projects we can find today. Fortunately, I've just been on some online auctions spending far too much money on random stuff, and I have some weird old electronics to check out. These online auctions are great. You can bid on like pallets of stuff, and you never quite know what you get. These are some old handheld PCs. There's like some old credit card readers, and then I want to check these things out. These appear to be some kind of a tablet or slate PC. It seems to have some basic input-output ports. It's got HDMI, it's got a single USB port, headphone jack, micro SD. That's about it really. There's this docking station, I guess, if you want to do anything more complicated with it. I actually got two of these, and they didn't come with power supplies. I don't know if anything else is missing or wrong with them. So we're going to start digging into this and see what we can find out about it. Now fortunately I hoard about every power supply I ever come across, so somewhere in here I think we can find both a 19 volt power output for a standard laptop, and then um, since those Samsungs use a much smaller plug than this, we may have to sacrifice something else's plug and I've got so many different cords in here, there's so many duplicates, I don't feel bad about mixing and matching, cutting the end off of one and sticking it on another. We'll see what we can make for that thing, and if it works, maybe I'll order a real one online. Ah, huh, goes straight into the BIOS. I wonder if this even has an operating system on it. It's supposed to be a touch screen, but the BIOS is not touch enabled here. Alright, 2013, that's a little bit newer than I expected. Seems like it has no internal drives, or at least nothing recognized. Alright, well I did get two of these at that auction, so let's see if the other one has an OS installed. Yeah, same deal on this other one. It claims there's no hard drive, no other media. I wonder if somebody actually took the uh, SSD out of there, or if it just doesn't have anything installed on it. Let's see if we can boot off a Linux distro and see if there's even a drive in there. Alright, so installing from a USB drive is going to be a little annoying because there's only one USB port on this thing and touch doesn't work right now, so I really need a keyboard. So I'm going to go have to dig up a USB hub somewhere. Well, the installer is really only finding that USB disk. It's not finding any internal drives. So I think uh, the auction company or whoever consigned it to them might have pulled the drive out of here before they sold it. Some of these older tablets, you can just kind of pop them apart with a credit card or a knife or something and get inside there to see what's going on. Yep, it looks like somebody has definitely looted the SSD, so thanks whoever uh, surplus this or sold it. They must have had some super secret critical business information and they're too lazy to just format the thing. Alright, we've gone online and found a more legitimate power supply as well as a cheap SSD. I've never actually used an SSD before, so let's see what it's all about. So I'm having some issues installing Linux on this. Uh, it's getting very, very laggy. I'm going to try a different Lubuntu version. That is still having a lot of issues. It gets about 7% through the install process and then just locks up completely. We're going to try Linux Mint. That's also based on Ubuntu and is also pretty lightweight. All right, well, I've got this thing working quite a bit better. The um, touchscreen had some issues, but after a few reboots, it seems like it settled itself out. I do still have some sound issues. I've got this analog stereo, whatever that is, and basically means that only my right speaker works. I do have the accessibility on-screen keyboard that pops up. It's mildly kludgy, but it does work. Now, this isn't like a regular tablet. You can't scroll by just swiping the whole screen. You actually have to find that little tiny scroll bar on the side to scroll up and down with it. This thing seems to work pretty well as just a YouTube video player, at least. So if nothing else, I can do that with it. Heck, even the webcam works reasonably well, so I guess I could do Zoom meetings with this thing. And the battery life seems reasonable on this thing. You can definitely see the battery power remaining go up and down as you're doing different stuff with it. So if I'm watching a video and the fan's running on full power, it says I have an hour left. If it's just sitting here displaying a static background, it says I have two and a half hours. So I've turned this on at 9 a.m. and I've been doing random stuff with it until now. The batteries lasted about two hours, which is actually pretty decent for an older laptop with continuous normal use. So one mildly annoying thing about this device is when I try to use the menu and it's over the top of something in the background, I can't actually click on anything. It's, it's clicking through to the background, so 
Like I'm trying to go to accessibility and it's just clicking onto this web window. I don't know why it does that. It doesn't always do that. If I've got YouTube up in full screen, I can open the menu and I can click on things. So I basically have to be back at the desktop with nothing else open if I want to use the menu for anything. Alright, so what can I actually do with this thing? Um, I didn't really have a use in mind when I got it. It was just cheap at an auction and it seems like it works with the addition of some of the parts that got stripped out before it was sold. So it's basically a giant tablet or a touchscreen laptop without the keyboard. I think I could probably get a clip-on keyboard for it and use it as a laptop. Or I could use it as like a standalone media device like a YouTube player. I could bring it out to where I've got some trail cams, pull the SD cards out, review pictures, that sort of thing. It seems to have a pretty good battery life and I can set it so it doesn't go to sleep or go to screensaver. So I can just have it on in the kitchen for recipes and whatnot. And I could do something like an RTL SDR or handheld frequency analyzer with it. It only has that one USB port which is a little annoying. You can really only do one USB accessory at a time with this thing. I could stick it on the wall in the garage and use it to look up part numbers and whatnot online. I actually tried that before with another tablet that I had and something about the garage environment literally melted it. I don't know if it's my unsafe use of solvents or it just got too hot near the window or what, but the uh, glue holding the screen onto that tablet actually separated and oozed out all over and it was disgusting. So maybe I won't do that with this one. If anyone has any suggestions for what to do with this gizmo, uh, leave it in the comments. I actually have two of these. I don't have an SSD or power supply for the other one, but uh, if I come up with a use for this, I can always uh, refurbish that other one and get it running too. Or I could just keep it around for spare parts, as the name of my channel suggests. Thanks for watching this blatant filler video, and we'll see you next time.